lovelies, my name is Emily and this is my channel Pamphilarity and today I'm going to talk about the five basic beginner brushes that you need and also what you should spring for for maybe possibly a higher end brand and what you can get away with drugstore brushes or anything cheaper than that. I tried to get just five and this is for a full face of makeup. Anything that you want to do, contouring, eyebrows, eyeshadow, anything you need to do on your face. So I narrowed it down to five. I have two honorary mentions. You don't have to have these, but I could, just couldn't get it to five. So the first I'm gonna start with all over face and this is not something that you need to spring for. This is something that you can use super cheap. Um, I actually, my favorite brush that I use and I've repurchased this brush is the e.l.f. powder brush and it is a flat top brush and I actually use this for my foundation and it is absolutely perfect for it. I love using a beauty blender but I find that if I'm in a rush I'm too lazy to sit there and soak the beauty blender and it's a lot harder to clean the beauty blender for me. Um, and these brushes are just $2, 2 to $5 or something. Um, and this is, a, I, you can stipple with it and you can also use circular motions all over your face. I absolutely love this. It gives it an awesome finish to the face and it gives you that skin-like, not caked on makeup look. So absolutely do not need a spring for a high-end foundation brush. I've used bunches. I've used the MAC ones. If you get the flat ones, they will leave streaks and you'll end up going in with a brush like this and buffing out all of those streaks that you just made on your face. So why not just stipple this on? If you need to streak it all over the place, that's fine. And then go through and buff it so that you don't have any streaks or cakes and all that kind of stuff. So absolutely for all of our face brush, and you can use this for concealer, you can use this for highlight, you can use this for um, any sorts of cream product that you need to um, use on your face. For um, mineral or powder foundations, you can also use this. Um, usually, I do recommend using the brushes that are meant for those, so that's why I kind of didn't use that as an all-around type thing but you can use a brush like this for um, liquid and foundation but I recommend getting two of these like they're two dollars each get one that you're going to use with your liquids and one that you're going to use with your powders but that's just me because um, it does get pretty deep inside of this the liquid foundation at least mine does um, so I absolutely do recommend that one for the entire face anything that you need to do with it except Moving on to brush and contour. This is another one you absolutely do not need to spend a lot of money on. I got this brush at the drugstore. It's a Soho brush. It's actually one of my favorite brushes in my collection. And I guess I should have showed you guys my brush collection, but I get a little embarrassed of it because I have so many brushes. It's ridiculous. I have probably over 100 brushes. So when I say that these are my favorite brushes, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, so this brush is just an angled uh, powder brush. And this one's cool because it actually has kind of hand holds in it. It's a lot easier for me to use when I'm doing other people's makeup, especially but for myself as well. Um, but this brush is great. What it is, is if you can look at it from this angle, it's, it does have a more narrow, as for this is round. And then this is more narrow and then it tapers this direction if you look at it this way tapers this way so this actually fits perfectly for a contour when you're bringing up your bronzer or whatever you're using um, and then you can just switch the direction of it to get it all around here and then I just go around and I usually just use the same brush and I put it in my um, blush and then I put this on my cheeks apples of my cheeks 
You can also use it for a highlight by switching the direction of it and bringing it up the top of your cheekbones. You can run it down your nose, uh, across your cheek, on your cupid's bow. Um, it actually has a pretty intricate thing here where you can actually take this a little bit. I use sometimes I'll use it for bronzer underneath my lip if I'm trying to look for like luscious lips. So this one's an awesome one. Do not need to splurge for this brush at all. Okay, the next thing we're going to get into is usually when you're laying down your eyeshadow, you want to start with your blending color, which is a color that's going to go in your crease. You can kind of go onto the eyelid and then up above the crease. This is just going to be a color that makes everything blend, so it's not going to give you like that cut crease look or just like a hard finish up there. And this is, this was a hard one for me because, um, Actually, one of the one of my Mac brushes is the first brush that I ever purchased, and I was gonna put that in my top five, but then I actually left it in North Carolina, and I've just been using other random brushes. So I thought, you know what? If it's one of those brushes that I have, I can't that I can go without, then it's not essential. So um, I'm just any type of brush that is just fluffier, and usually is shaped very thin this way and all this is going to do is give you that fan right here and my dog's going to make a cave right now um, and it's just going to use you that fan motion so that you can blend and then when you're laying down your eyeshadow and you need to blend in that area in the crease then you can just use that um, to just blend everything together to give you soft edges um, you can even use this underneath because of how thin it is. You can use this to um, drag some eyeshadow underneath your eye to kind of give you a smoky eye. The eye nose are really popular. So again, this is a this is a Coastal Sense one, but honestly, I just grabbed it like I was like, oh, what size? Because I have them all different sizes. It just kind of depends on how smoked out I want. Um, I have e.l.f. ones, I have, um, I don't even know the brands, they're just cheap. Um, and then this is just one that I think is super cheap as well. I think they came in like a huge pack of them. Okay, so now we're going to get into the brushes. This is also like, this is a Coastal Scents one. This is just a larger one, a fluffier one. This is what I used to do my makeup today because I just wanted it to be really, um... I didn't really care where it went like I just wanted it to be blended out and not harsh so now we're getting to the brushes that I cannot live without and are worth putting the money into I just before I will get into this I want you to let you know that I've had this brush for 10 years and I've had this brush for probably eight years they're both MAC brushes. MAC brushes are my absolute favorite brushes because they live up to the hype, they are soft, and they last freaking forever. I mean, literally, I've done, I've done my makeup since college. I mean, when I wore makeup like every single day or heavy, harsh makeup to the club, and I still can get this white. I mean, after I use this on my eyeshadow, I, I didn't actually clean my brushes for the longest time. So this brush was like black. And then finally I was like, oh, you can clean brushes? And I cleaned it and it went back to just this white, beautiful, soft. Also, I noticed that with my eyeshadow brush, that's probably the one that I clean the most frequently, even spot cleaning between different colors. And this one keeps its shape really well it doesn't fray a lot of times if you have cheaper brushes like this for instance um, because this is a blending brush if it frays a little bit not a big deal but for brushes like this um, you don't really want them to fray and you want them to keep the beveled shape that they have see this rounded off um, shape that it has that's what you want to kind of keep this is a MAC 217 I just wanted to double check it's almost worn off of here um, this is great for packing on color onto your eyelid. I use this for pigments a lot to pack on the color. 
Um, you can also use this to turn and blend. You can use this brush to do every single thing on your eye besides eyeliner. And that's pretty impressive for a brush. You can take it and smoke out underneath here. You can use it to blend. But I find that this is why I picked this over the other MAC brush that is more better for blending. Um, but this brush you can use to really pack on color. But you can also use it to layer up color. It's just a really good, great beginner brush. If you're going to spend money to buy a brush, your first brush, I recommend it be the MAC 217. This is such a great brush and you can do so much with it. And like I said, this has lasted me a decade. So, and it's still great. I mean, I'm like, when am I going to have to buy another one of these? Like, the day just lasts forever. Um, the other brush that I is kind of up to you but I think is worth the splurge is a uh, MAC 208. Now there is another MAC brush that is a little bit larger than this but I figure you might as well go a little bit smaller because um, I do use both of them. One I use for my eyebrows and one I use for my eyeliner but that's just a splurge. Um, but if I were to pick between the two I would pick the 208 because I think it's more versatile. This is a really tiny angled brush and what you can do with this is um, really tiny strokes. You can get um, Max Matte Brown um, and do your eyebrows with this. This is really great for beginners, especially if you're filling in your eyebrows because you can get a really light stroke and if you mess up, you can just rub that right off and you're using an eyeshadow and you can really get like hair strokes in there and you're not getting that like sharpie eye eyebrow. Um, then you can clean this off and go straight into using your eyeliner. You can use um, the, uh, what do they call it? Um, it's not liquid, but it's like a gel. You can use a gel eyeliner with this. You can also use a powder. If you have a black like carbon um, powder, you can just use this. And it's nice for beginners because if you can use you get little tiny strokes that you can go through but because this is so angled and keeps its shape so well you can really do a nice flick you can get a nice straight line you can also get a really super thin line if you can also make it thicker but the best thing is when you can get that thin line and then you can always add on to that so this is also another great brush these are not hugely expensive but they're definitely more than two to five dollars um but those two mac brushes are the ones that i would splurge for and i have and they've lasted me forever so definitely recommend the only one that i would add on that is not necessary um because i didn't actually set my makeup for a really long time sometimes i still don't but a lot of people it's necessary like they set their makeup every single time they use it and I absolutely say if you're gonna spring for something that you're gonna set your makeup for the MAC 150 is wonderful I personally wouldn't have splurged for this just because it's extravagant to me but it was gifted to me and now that I have it if I were if it were to stop working or break or something like that I would definitely repurchase it um, but this is just the softest, fluffiest, most wonderful thing. Like I just sit there and I just, I'm like, oh, I'm not even like setting my makeup at that point. I'm probably like taking it all off, but it just feels so soft and so wonderful. And again, it just really keeps it shaped nicely when you clean it. And I clean my brushes really rough. So there is no reason that these brushes last as long as they do. But those are my recommendations for my top five. Uh, brushes for the face, I guess that was, I mean, people wear makeup on their bodies, but I don't know. What am I talking about? Eh. But anyways, so yeah, those are my recommendations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, list down below. I know lots about brushes. If you are thinking about a different brush, I can give you a recommendation. If you have recommendations for your top five brushes or a brush that is your holy grail that you cannot live without, Please list it down below for others to see because my opinion is not always the correct one. I understand that. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a pain for a stress free day. And I love you guys so much. Um, bye!